Okay, so uh, the watch stopper lighting control. There are seven panels in this building. Three are located on the first floor, one in the A closet, one in the B closet, one in the C closet. So, and then the other, the other four are on the second floor, third floor, fourth floor, fifth floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you on this panel, because they're all identical, how to do some maintenance, how to do some, uh, and just to check to see if things are on. So, so what, what it's showing you here is the, there's 48 relays in here. Most panels are not using all 48, and you can see by the schedule, a lot of the relays are spares. And some of them don't even exist, where they're not even plugged in. So these are all the relays here, and I'm going to take the cover off and show you in a minute. But what's showing you on the control boards here, the blue indicator light indicates that that relay, and it's numbered right here, 1 through 12, 13 to 24, etc. The blue light is on, the relay is closed, meaning whatever light is on that relay is, is currently on. So during the day, at this time of day, you'll see probably most of the lights on. The ones that are off are most likely exterior lights, which there's not that many of them, but there's a few here and there that are probably exterior lights, which they're off during the day. So, so that's relatively normal. Most of the blue lights should be on. The main board here, the, the main light you should see is this one here, and it says config, and it's flashing red, and we refer to that uh, as the heartbeat. So it should be flashing red. If it's on steady, there's a problem somewhere. If it's not lit at all, most likely none of the other lights will be lit either, and that means this board is no good, or the power supply feeding it is no good, or if there's no lights in here at all, then probably power to the panel is, is off, or, or uh, something's, something's wrong with the entire panel. So what I'm going to do now is just show you uh, if there's an individual light that doesn't work um, and you've narrowed it down to a particular relay by looking on the schedule. So for example, let's say we determine uh, relay 11, corridor down lights. We went down the corridor, the corridor down lights are not on. So uh, maybe that light is on, maybe it's off, but let's replace the relay. Or I'll show you what to do to check the relay. So I'm just going to take this cover off, loosen the screws, which I've done. Now, this is 277 voltage. So I'm going to stand my distance and just kind of point from a distance. I would suggest uh, if you do take that panel cover off to shut it down, you may have to do that at after hours at a good time. So, um, but what you might not be able to see through the uh, camera is on the relay, up back on the inside, and I skipped over this, there's a little white, it's a little white slider. And that little white slider, with a screwdriver tip, you could turn the relay on, you could turn the relay off. So you could verify that this relay either works or doesn't work. But let's go with the theory that this relay number 11 does not work. It's marked here 11. That's the one we found on the schedule is the Carter downlights. So this whole black thing is the relay. We got the black part here, the coil here, and the control connector here, which just unplugs. So, provided power's off, disconnect the wires, unplug this, and just kind of squeeze the body here. There's two little tabs on the top and bottom. Just squeeze them, push it right through. Take a new relay, or in this case, if you don't have time to order a relay or you don't have any spares, as I stated before, there's plenty of just, there's a few spares just, just that are un, that are not used. So now you can't take the wire from here and put it here because that position is what's programmed. 
So you do need to literally take this relay, if you're going to use this one, and put it there. Take the bad one, don't put it back in the system and throw it out. Um, make sure you tighten the screws. Again, that's 277. Don't work on it hot. And make sure you, you do tighten the screws uh, when you're done. Um, going back to when I said before, if this there's no lights lit on here, and I said it could be the power supply or the board. Well, if it's the board, it's the board, and it will have to be reprogrammed if you replace this board. But this is the power supply that feeds the board. So you could just make sure you have voltage here. And in this case, uh, this is 120. You can tell by the colors. These are 120. You can tell by the colors. This is all 277, the orange and brown and yellow. The, the way the system works, just so you know what these cables are, they are Cat5 cables, Cat5 connectors, but it's not Ethernet. We're just using uh, the convenience of Cat5 cabling to connect all the switches and all the sensors and all the room controllers um, back to the panel. So uh, don't plug in Ethernet and think you could read something on your computer. In fact, it says caution, uh, not Ethernet because there's power on this and it could back feed into a computer and damage the computer's ethernet port or vice versa if you put plug something in here that's ethernet it, it may disrupt the memory in this port too so it's just the convenience of cat5 cables it's not ethernet okay so um then there's another type of cable here. It's this other um, red cable, and it's just a three conductor cable. The only place this cable is used is this cable you will see, and this interconnects all seven panels I was talking about. So this, uh, right here, we have two cables. That means it's an in and out, it's not the end. So at some point uh, on the first floor here is the last one, which has one cable into it. And it goes in and out, here, in and out, upstairs, and I believe, um, Oh, the way this system is, the first floor is a system on, amongst itself. So you will only have three of these panels on the first floor, and they're all interconnected. The second, third, fourth, and fifth floor is another system amongst itself. So those panels are all connected together. But the first floor does not connect to the second floor. So that makes the system uh, two separate systems. And that was because we had a limitation on how many devices, meaning how many switches, how many sensors it can handle. So having the second, third, and fourth, and fifth floor combined with the first floor, it, it became too many devices. So that's why the first floor system is itself, and the second, uh, the, up, the upper floors are all by themselves. I believe that's, uh, that's everything I on this panel. Uh, we're now in the elevator lobby and we have several sets of switches which I'll show you what they do. But um, the way the system works is the way the time schedule is programmed in this system. 7 a.m. the lights in the public areas, that would be the lobbies, the corridors, turn on at 7 a.m. At the same time what that does is it locks out these switches. So the switches do not work from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m., which at 8 p.m. the lights turn off and the switches then work. So if people are still here or people come in after 8, 8, 8 p.m., they could turn the lights on and off. So I want to show you how these lights work. It's probably about 8.30, 9 o'clock. So these switches are locked out. You have a remote. What we could do is we could make this remote tell the building that we're in the after hours mode as opposed to the normal hours mode. So in other words, back to what I was saying, at 7 a.m. it goes into normal hours mode. The condition of normal hours was lights in the public areas turn on, switches are locked out. After hours mode, which in this case is 8 p.m., turns lights off and the switches become active. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the remote to switch this to after hours mode. I, we went through this in, in another video, some of the details, but so in this case, I'm going to go down, turn
turn it on from here. There's a lot, there's uh, about 10 menus. So I'm going to go down to the one that says utilities. Then I'm going to go down to where it says room mode. Now room mode is just the term they, term they use for, in this case, the entire floor. And just use the arrows, switch it over to after hours. And then it tells me to point at any IR device, meaning anyone that has a little black window. So what I've just done is I've just recreated 8 p.m. So lights went out. Now the switches, well, they start out by off, and I can show you what they do now. So this switch here just did the down lights. This switch here are the uh, circle lights in the, in the hallway. This one is some lights down, some down lights down there. And this one, notice, has a little scale. So this is actually a dimmer. The ones with the dimmers, in addition to being able to dim them, they also have they also have a daylight control sensor up in the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And when this and that's typically lights by windows. So on this side, this is where the security office is. These lights are on a daylight sensor. The daylight sensor automatically dims those lights. And you can override that. That's why there's a dimmer here, as opposed to on off like all the other switches. So um, so that's why if you see certain lights, especially by the windows, that seem to be dimmer than others, the lights that's bright is probably an emergency light. So it's going to be full brightness. It's probably by code and can't have a dimmer on it. The lights that are dimmer or more yellow um, are probably being directed by the sunlight and the daylight sensor that there to be a little dimmer. Now with that said, you can override them, but actually during the day you can't, and I'm thinking about it, because the switch is locked out. But right now I can't, because we're in after hours, so I can't actually make those lights brighter. And you can probably see it just a little bit over my head, the light that I'm controlling. So during the day, I guess the dimmer is this the override's not going to be effective. It's you're just going to have to, the daylight sensor is going to have to do all the work. So it's going to judge how bright the sunlight is, dim the light. As, as it gets cloudier or darker, the light will go back up. And until that night, then they're going to be at full brightness. So that's why some of the switches you may see with a dimming scale on it. We're still in the elevator lobby. Now we're in the middle. And there's three more switches just to show you what they do. And it's just more lighting, you can see it mostly over my head, like this was the linear, so over the elevators, light around the corner. So these, these are all in the center, so there's really no daylight involved here that I was just talking about. These are just on-off switches. Again, during the day, they won't work. But just so you know, at night, if someone comes in, especially if they start out here in the first floor lobby, they could turn lights on and there's no timer on them to automatically turn them off and there's no sensors to automatically turn them off so if you do turn lights on at night you do need to turn them off otherwise they'll stay on through the night then the following day and then they'll turn off at 8 p.m. the following night so it would be good to be disciplined to turn lights off if you come through here at night but they're not on uh, a delay timer in case there is some activity here and you don't want lights turning off in the corridor if people are coming and going. So we're going to just go to one more set of switches. We are by the courtyard side and the lights on the ceiling that you can see, hopefully the video is picking it up, you can see some lights are dim and some are bright. Again, the bright ones are emergency lights, but the ones that are dim are being controlled by the daylight sensor which is located 
that it matters, but just so you know, with part of the lighting is it's that little tiny sensor about the size of a half dollar right there. So that what that's doing is that's actually on a 45 degree angle, it's looking out this window, taking in the sunlight, and compensating the light you see on the floor for the light for the electric light. So that's what it does. So as that light gets dull, these lights get brighter and it keeps the floor at a designated foot candle level. So that's the whole idea. So we're going to go back over to the bank of switches on this side of the elevators. So like we had on the other side, one switch has the little dimming scale on it, which is the one that will make those lights brighter. And then the other switches are on-off switches for um, various lights. And that includes some lights down that hall and some of the lights, I believe, behind me and over me. We're, we're, we're still in the lobby, we're by this door that goes out to the courtyard, and there is another dimmer here, but this is essentially a three-way switch to the dimmer on the other side for the lights in the lobby. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay. There's another set of switches over here, which we're going to go to. We're a little bit more down the hallway, same side, there's another dimmer here, which is also a, a three-way, or four-way in this case the same lights in the lobby. So this is a, another dimmer that I could turn these lights on and off. But again, during the day, the stuff is inactive. So um, that's how it was. 1-217, uh, we're on the first floor. And this is typical of uh, classrooms, activity rooms, cafeteria, rooms of that nature. And the components in this room uh, consist of a dimmer, uh, some have all just a dimmer, some have a dimmer and a switch. In this case, we have a dimmer and a switch, and a occupancy sensor or a vacancy sensor. And the way it works is, we, as you can see, we're in the room now and it's dark. And that's because this room, by electrical code, requires you need to manually turn the lights on. The sensor will not turn the lights on, it only turns the lights off. So we refer to it as a vacancy sensor in that case. So we come in, the switch that is a switch and not a dimmer is, is for the whiteboard. The switch that is the dimmer is the overhead lighting and, we could, and, and they're pretty bright. Uh, so we could raise and lower that. Once we, as long as we're in the class and that sensor, which is on the ceiling, is picking up motion the lights will stay just as we left them until there's no more motion. Basically, everybody's left the room, and in 20 minutes, the lights will shut off. And if you come back in, uh, you need to turn the lights on. There is a 10-second grace period. So if you are sitting still, and it's very possible, maybe one or two people are in the room, uh, maybe working on a laptop or uh, a tablet, and there's not a lot of movement, the sensor may turn the lights off. It's, you've got 10 seconds to kind of just wave your arms and have the sensor see you, and it will turn the lights right back on. Beyond that 10 seconds, you'll need to get up and hit the switch, or if you had left the room, of course, come back in and turn the lights on. So since we're on the subject of the sensor, let me show you back to the remote of how to adjust the sensitivity because it might not be um, if it's a inherent if it's a problem with the room where it's always turning lights off especially in maybe an office where a person again is just sitting at a desk on a phone not a lot of movement you might want to make that sensor a little more sensitive or less sensitive if you find the lights are on all night long and they never seem to turn off so we're going to go back to our remote Turn it on. The first item on the menu is labeled sensor configuration. So this is an IR remote, infrared remote. So that's 
that's right where we want to be. So what we do is we point it up at the sensor, which is in the ceiling. and press this middle button while the sensor configuration is flashing. And it gives you a couple of more menus. Uh, current settings. So let's just see what it's actually set at. I need to get just a little closer. I'm doing this for the video. Okay, so now I can pull it away. It says time delay. 20 minutes. So that's what I was saying before. After 20 minutes of no motion, lights will turn off. So the maximum is 30. You can use the right arrow to raise that, 21, 22, 23, etc. Put it back to 20. Or use the left arrow to, to make that uh, less. The next item down is PIR sensitivity, um, which is the passive infrared. So that's that's the body heat, and that's, you know that's being detected. That's the red LED that flashes. Uh, every time it flashes, it detects a change in, in, in heat movement around the room. So it's currently set, and it's the factory setting, at 90%. So that's the average use. Um, you know, you may find that if, you, if it's an office and you sit in a corner, you could just bring it up to 100 and see if that helps not turn the lights out on you. The next one down is the US sensitivity, I mean that's for ultrasonic, uh, which is air movement, which is sound, which sound moves air, uh, air um, as you move through the room. Uh, also, um, and that's being, that's indicated by the blue LED. So the factory setting for that is 70%. Uh, that one is, the one you may want to play with the most. Uh, if the lights don't turn off, they seem to stay on all night, or if you've left an hour for lunch, you come back, your lights are still on. It's possible if you left your door open, or if the air conditioner, or maybe even the heater is really cranking, uh, it's, there's a draft in the room. And that draft is just keeping that sensor re-triggered. So you may want to lower that from 70% down to <clears throat> just jump down to maybe 50%, maybe 30%. If it's right next to a vent, which uh, during my commissioning, I've caught most of those. Uh, uh, so I've just turned the ultrasonic off. If I've seen that, you know, it's a relatively small room and the sensor is right next to a tile, which is a vent. So I've just shut the ultrasonic off because I know it's going to stay on all the time. So you can play with that. I think I've caught every, almost every one in all the rooms I've been into, so I think they're okay. The next thing down is, um, uh, well, trigger, we could skip because we're not triggering this. Um, we're not using this as an occupancy sensor. We're not using it when you walk into a room and it turns on. So we could actually skip the setting on that. But re-trigger, it says PIR your, or US. The choices are PAR and US, or just PAR or just US. So in other words, I'm leaving it set at PIR or US. So in other words, when you're moving around the room, it only needs to see one thing, whether it needs to see infrared or it needs to see ultrasonic. One or the other will just keep it. In other words, it'll keep starting that 20 minute countdown clock over again. If you take the cover off and look at the sensor, just so you know, there is a display there, and it does have the, the, what's in the display. You'll see it'll always start out with 20, and then you'll see it just start counting down, as long as you're not moving. Um, and then, so in other words, what I'm saying is every time you come in the, and re-trigger it, 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 if it, if there was no movement for two minutes, it'll be 18, it'll jump back to 20, and it'll just keep starting that 20 over again. So that's what that, that means. Um, the walkthrough mode, that really doesn't apply. Again, that applies for uh, an area that you, um, it's on automatic on, and we're not doing that, so the walkthrough doesn't matter. What that means, just so you know what it means, is let's just say the sensor was set to be automatic. You come in the room, but if you have walkthrough mode on, what that means is if you walk in and it sees motion for less than 30 seconds, 
then it will turn the lights out in three minutes as opposed to 20 minutes. The reason for that is, let's say you've left your room and you come back a half hour later, the lights are out and you forgot your keys. Uh, you come in, you grab your keys and walk right out. There's no reason to have the lights on for another 20 minutes because they turned on as soon as you walk through your door. Three minutes, it knows you just came in briefly and left. But that doesn't apply, but just want you to know what that menu item is, if you see it. There, the next thing down is test mode. You can test the sensor if you are playing around or adjusting those sensitivities and you want to just see, you know, if you really want to see if you've gotten it right, go, the next one down is test mode. Go into test mode and, and what that does is, probably not going to, oh, yeah. Okay, so it turns the lights out in five seconds. And then after five seconds, no, after 10 seconds, that's that grace period, the lights should not turn on, okay? So, um, so if I turn them back on and stay still, no, I'm watching it because I'm seeing if, it's, if it sees me or not. Okay, so it didn't. And now that 10 second grace period, no. so I did that within 10 seconds. But if I wait beyond 10 seconds, the clock has a clicking, so I counted 10 of those. But, see, so, it, it, uh, it, so what I'm saying is now it's, it's definitely set for manual. So I do need to turn the lights back on. So this one works. To get out of that mode, or they're going to keep going off in five minutes, but it eventually times out after three minutes. Just go down to where it says exit, exit test mode. And now we're back to the main menu, so we should be going now. Okay, we're in the second floor in the uh, med prep, the, you know, the nurses area. Um, and I'm just going to show you there's a, a bank with multiple switches here that take care of the patient uh, wings and corridors. Since the buttons aren't engraved, what I've done is I've created a cheat sheet, cheat sheet which I'll include in my report. Uh, this could be posted on the wall or you could be more creative and you know have this done or maybe even somehow label the buttons directly but just so you know what this represents so corridor general and then off the blueprints you know I have the zone letters and and which uh, may not mean anything you know out in the field but uh, at any rate this is corridor general Corridor General are the uh, two by two square lights. Corridor Recessed are the recessed lights. All the way at the end of the hallway is, I believe, just two right over the windows at the end of each hallway. The next one is the sign marker, and those are the wall wash um, recessed lights that are over the placards next to each room. And then the next one down is the night light. This is the night light in each bedroom, in each patient room, which is different than the overhead lighting in each patient room, which is done by the controls in the patient rooms, and I could, we could show you those. So this column is are these wings here. This column is the same thing, it repeats general, recessed, signs, and night lights for this wing. And then over here, we have corridor general, corridor recess, and observation, and those refer to just over the, the desk on the outside. Not used, that's why it's not lit. This whole column is not used. Uh, if you do press them, nothing happens as far as lighting, they just blink meaning there's no program in it. So that's why they're blinking, but if you look on the sheet, 
there's that, that's why they're doing that. So these sheets will be provided. There's one for every floor and every section where it has these multi button switches. So we'll go into one of the bedrooms and I'll just show you the difference between what's in the bedroom and this thing and these nightlight switches. Okay. okay, we're in one of the bedrooms. So what I was just referring to was the nightlight from the nurse's office. It's this light right here. So it's an amber light that just gives a little bit of a nightlight. The lights in the room are controlled from here. So this one here is the, um, it's just an on off switch and this is a sensor. So this will turn the lights off. In this case, uh, they're programmed for 15 minutes. So, uh, and that's the linear lighting over the window. This one here has a split switch and that enables, and it's got an up and a down arrow that enables you to raise and lower the light in this room. That's the recess light right in the center of the room. And I could raise and lower that just by holding the up and the down arrow. And also, if you leave these lights on, either one or both, they'll turn off in 15 minutes after they were, after they see motion. You can change that. Um, uh, the way to do that would be to uh, take this faceplate off, pry the top, this top button cap off, and then behind the button cap are little tiny switches, and on the inside of the cap is a sticker, and that sticker tells you the combination of switches up, down, down, up, 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 down, down. They all represent different amounts of timeout. So you can go from five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, they also represent some of the sensitivities and things of that nature um, behind there. But they're all set as per the uh, code and as the uh, building drawings specified for the star. So that's how you control the lights in the bedroom. So the bathrooms, have the same switches you I just showed you, or at least the same switch that I showed you in the bedroom. However, it's programmed automatically. So, and that's also required by code. So the light turns on uh, in a public area, bathrooms, corridors, uh, automatically. So that's the difference between the si switch switches. It's the same switches, except the settings that I told you about with little switches, you could set it for automatic or manual, and that's the difference between the bedrooms and the bathrooms.